I often get people that ask, how do you find these places? How do you find these roads, these trails? What road are you on? How do I find that? And my answer is always the same thing. The hunt is the best part of the adventure. Now it's not because I don't want to tell anybody where these spots are, because obviously we're not the only ones using them. Many spots we go to, there's fire pits that have been used. You can tell people are using it. A lot of YouTubers used to give their locations where they were, and a, a few of them have made comment that they don't do that anymore uh, for a multitude of reasons. One is that people make a mess and you end up cleaning a spot because there's garbage everywhere, that's one. Another is that increased access, more traffic, increases the risk of trail closures. And all those points might be valid, uh, but that's not why I do it. I really believe that the best part of the adventure in finding these spots is, is the hunt for these spots. Getting out there, exploring, and simply getting lost in finding new places. There's always one nice place around the corner that if you go a little bit further, you might find a gem that you've never found before. Yes, it's more like the process is more important than the actual product. I agree. So where are we supposed to camp? The Great Star Quad Trail. Do you want to go give that a try or what? It beats sitting on the side of the road, so let's go check it out. Let's go ways and if it doesn't pan out, we'll go down the road somewhere else. Sounds good. Okay. I think the critical part in the hunt is actually getting started. So how do you get started? Well, there's the obvious, all these YouTubers, they're all over the place. And if you just pay attention to their videos, there's lots of clues. You can get an idea where they are. The trick is having a base, having a spot that you know you can camp if you don't find anything else. So what you do is you find a place you know that you can go camp. It could even be a campground, a spot you've been to before, um, something easy to get to, a place that you know that at the end of the day, if you don't find anything, you can come camp at that spot. And from that base point, that jumping off point, you go look around and don't settle for the first camp spot that you see. You'll come across just a gem that's just gorgeous. And just around the corner, you go a little further and that's one that's even better. And just when you think, hey, I can't get any nicer than this, you go around the bend and there's one more even better. So we decided to move. I mean, check this out. There's so many nice spots around here, well worth moving. But often it's quite the opposite. You find a really nice spot and you think, hey, that's probably something better. So you go look and ends up that you just drive and drive and you don't find anything. So you can always come back to that spot that you found. Now, personally, I'm not a big fan of backtracking, but when you're looking for a place to camp and it's getting dark, backtracking's okay. And in the event that you don't find anything, you have your fallback spot that you knew, you knew about. Um, that spot that you've been at before, a campground that you'll pay your fee and you're good for the night. But I think that's what underpins that security, if you will, that you, you know you got somewhere to go. And it never fails. You find that spot that you settle with, you get up in the morning, you pack up and you keep exploring, you keep going down the road and right around the corner, there's one that's even better. Remember that one in Moab? Oh yes. So for example, the first time we went to Moab, we were uh, in our last days of our trip, we were heading home, we were kind of tired, it was stupid hot, and we needed to find a spot, and shade was critical. And we were pressured to find a camp for the night, and we settled for a spot that was pretty good, actually. Go back about three years later, and we had that spot in mind, and we thought, hey, let's keep going a little bit further. We didn't go one more kilometer, and here we are down close to the river, lots of shade, gorgeous spot, way better than the one we had settled for the first place. So that just reinforced the idea that, look around a bit, there's always a great spot to find. And sometimes camp spots will surprise you. We were looking for a little campground out in Idaho last summer, and what we were looking for, because I had done a little bit of research on, on uh, Gaia GPS, and had a spot in mind. And we get there and it wasn't at all what we expected. Not a flat ground to be had. There was no way we were uh, setting up to camp. So we keep looking and we're really not finding anything. So eventually we kind of decide, okay, we're gonna have to settle for this spot. And it wasn't ideal and... Well, there's a little spot here. It wouldn't have been a first choice, that's for sure. It wouldn't have been a first choice. But after we made camp and settled and we sat down and looked around, turned out it was it was actually really nice. It was crazy quiet, beautiful view in the trees. Especially for not finding anything around there at all in order to be able to camp. At one point it was looking like we just have to camp in a cut line, uh, but it ended up re being really nice. Yes, it was in a very actually advantageous spot overlooking the valley. It was. Yeah. 
and sometimes they're not great spots. We came off the low, low motorway last year and we literally camped on the side of a road, on the side of a logging road. And that was pretty much the worst one we saw last year. And we had a real hard time finding a camp spot this go around. And this is what we ended up with. And I mean, literally, we're on the side of a road. And to be honest, it's remote, it's quiet. We are on the side of a, a logging road, if you will, but it's a dead end road. There'll be no traffic, there's been no traffic. We won't see anybody here. It's gonna be a nice, quiet night. So as far as bad camp spots go, <laughs> this isn't bad at all. I was doing a little bit of math, actually. I figured out we had about 250 nights camping with the Jeeps in the past few years. And out of those, we said, how many were like not good? I think it was one or two nights that were not the greatest. I remember two and unfortunately, it, it, it's not that the camp spot wasn't nice, it was the people around us. So karaoke at one o'clock in the morning, not impressive. And then some side-by-sides that were doing a night run, playing a lot of music, went by, stopped for a break, I guess, and kept us up for about a half hour during the night and then went on their way. And it's unfortunate that people would choose to do that where people are camping. There's families, there's people out for a quiet time. A little bit of respect goes a long way. And I guess that's probably the main reason other than the gorgeous spots, but the main reason why we push a little deeper, go a little bit deeper in the bush, off the beaten path, is to get away from those experiences that- Are not so positive. Are not so positive. So how do you find a starting point? Well, quite simply, YouTubers show all kinds of places, places to explore, um, simply Google Maps. If you have an idea, or once you have an idea where you're going, just having a look on Google Maps, and the idea is to find those roads and the satellite view often shows a nice little camp spot and you can see somebody's camping there and they're using it. Here in Alberta, we have public land use zones and the maps are available on the government website, the Alberta government website. And in these areas, there's all kinds of random camping. And by the way, for random camping in Alberta, uh, in the foothills of the Rockies, you will need a, an annual camping pass. Not a big deal, it's 30 bucks per person for the year. So for the two of us to have a camping pass, it's $30 each. That's the price of a campground. So if we go out more than one weekend, it's already covered. And with the improvements that we've been seeing here and there, especially to the busier areas where there's more traffic, I think that money's well worth it. When we consider investing in what we have for the future. Well, if this is where the money for the random camping fee is going and they're doing improvements or environment like that, works for me. I'll gladly pay that 30 bucks every year. Thank you. In Canada, we have back road map books. Um, they're available in hard copy and electronically as well. Shows all kinds of back roads in Alberta and BC for us. We use these quite a bit. In the US, we use a series of guidebooks. And for the life of me, I can't remember what they're called. What we have is a couple of guidebooks and basically the idea is flip to a page, see what's nearby and go check it out. And in all these publications, including the public land use maps, they show areas that you can camp, that random camping is available. So that can provide that jumping off point, that place you know you can go to while you're looking for uh, other camp spots to explore. And I think the best part of exploring like this is those camp spots that are unexpected and just a surprise especially when they're gorgeous. Places you never thought you would stop. Sometimes I'll see a camp spot on a YouTube channel and I have an idea where that is and we go looking for it. And I think I found it. You find a gorgeous place that's in that area. You go back and review the video and it's there, but it's not the same spot. So you go back again and you look some more and you find a other gorgeous spot that it's, it's in that area, but it ain't it. So for example, I saw one of Cappy's videos that it took us three tries to find the camp spot. And it was years later that we knew we were in the same area, but it was years later that we finally found and, and when I went back and reviewed Cappy's video, that was the spot. So even though those spots are fairly public and accessible, they're not always easy to find. One thing we always do, no matter if it's a camp spot we've used before or one of these new spots that we've found, 
is we always try to leave it better than we found it. Clean up a little bit if there's some garbage behind and leave it pristine for the next people. And every time we do find a spot that is just pristine and you can tell somebody's camped there, I appreciate the fact that the people in front of us cared enough to leave it in a great condition for us. I don't think there's anything worse than finding a beautiful area, great camp spot, and you realize that it's covered in garbage. And there you have it. That's why I don't really want to share our exact locations. And it's quite simply because I want to preserve the experience for people that are on the hunt. Because remember, the hunt is the best part of the adventure. Right, Jean? Correct. That's the best part. You don't know where you end up, you just keep going. And over the past few years, the hunt for adventure has brought us to some incredible camp spots. Here's a few. <laughs>